Is this the best graphics card of 2024 that's under $250? Well, we're going to take a look at it in this video by benchmarking it in some of your favorite games here in 2024 at 1080p and 1440p. This is the AMD RX 6650 XT. It was released in 2022, and although it's only got 8 gigabytes of VRAM, it still packs a powerful punch. I don't care what all of the people on Reddit say about VRAM. We'll be testing the graphics card with the i5-12600K and 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM running at 5600 megahertz. After this word from our sponsor, if you're looking at building your first gaming PC, then you need to try out SCD Key. They have great discounted Windows keys, like this Windows 10 Pro key that you can find on scdkey.com. All you gotta do is add it to your cart and use code MPC25 to bring that total all the way down to $16.84. Or if Windows 11 Pro is more your thing, you can use the same exact code MPC25 after you add it to your cart and drop that price all the way down to $23 and 46 cents. They also have other awesome things on their website like Office 2019. You can get the entire Office suite for $50.84, again using code MPC25. Go ahead and act fast because this is their March sale. I've used these codes a ton on all my PC builds and had zero issues from SCD Key. If you want to check it out, all the links for what we just talked about will be down in the description. First up, we got to see if it can run Crisis. I, I, I mean Starfield. All jokes aside though, Starfield is running much, much better. We tried it at 1440p on the ultra settings with no upscaling and we got like around 58 FPS. And then when we turned on FSR 3.0, that bumped us all the way up to like 65 FPS. We also tried it at 1080p, ultra settings, no upscaling, and we got around like 75 FPS. But when we turned on FSR 3 this time, it kind of went down or kind of stayed the same. Probably because our render resolution didn't lower. Sometimes it doesn't do that automatically with Starfield. So that's probably what the issue was. You could always use frame gen, but we're going to save that for a later part of the video. If after you watch this video, you decide you want to buy one of these, there will be a link down in the description. And it is an affiliate link. Amazon has these on sale for $220 all the time. So off to Cyberpunk 2077. This game will really stress any GPU these days. So we tried it ultra settings, no upscaling, and we only got like 49 FPS at 1440p. With FSR, it gave us a slight bump at like 54 FPS. So we bumped it down to high settings with FSR and we got a pretty solid like 60, 65 FPS. At 1080p, this game would probably run just fine. However, with Cyberpunk, we just kind of use it to stress the GPU out just to see, you know, what it would do. And at 1440p, I think that's as high as you should go with this graphics card. We also threw in Halo Infinite at 1440p, medium preset settings. We got at like 85 to 90 FPS and we bumped it down to 1080p and it jumped all the way up to like 120, 130 FPS. Pretty solid, although I couldn't see anyone on this map and died repeatedly. Warzone is pretty popular these days, so we tried it at 1440p on the ultra settings with zero upscaling whatsoever. And we got like 90 to 100 FPS, which was pretty good at 1440p, I thought, you know, for the eight gigabytes of VRAM. But then we used AMD's new feature, which is frame gen. Now everybody wants to talk about Nvidia's frame gen, but here frame gen really help this graphics card out. After we enabled frame gen, we got over 160 FPS. That's right, 8 gigabytes of VRAM, 160 FPS, and the millisecond response time was still really fantastic. So we also tried it at 1080p, no upscaling to start with, ultra settings, we got like 130 to 140 FPS, really solid if you don't want to use upscaling. But again, FSR 3.0 with frame gen, we're rocking over 200 FPS. 200 FPS, absolutely awesome for Warzone. You just don't see that every day. Frame gen's the future, baby. Make sure you press that like button for more FPS. Now, you know, we gotta try everyone's favorite battle royale, good old Fortnite, because, you know, everybody says that Fortnite can't run on AMD GPUs, and I've tested a lot of GPUs here on this channel, and they run Fortnite just fine. So we tried it at DX12 on like competitive mode settings. So like view distance on far, everything else on low or turned off. And we got like 180 to 200 FPS at 1440p, which was pretty solid. But at 1080p, it was much, much better at around like 220 to 250. I say that's much, much better. I guess it's really not that much, but everybody looks for that 240, you know? So it runs it pretty solid and it looks pretty good for DX12, but you know, every time I run a GPU test and I don't run performance mode for Fortnite, Everyone gets so upset, even though technically performance mode has more to do with your CPU than your GPU. The GPU is important, but you know, if you've got a crappy CPU, it's not going to matter. However, we still ran it on performance mode, 1440p. We got like over 200 FPS, 240 at 1440p. But then at 1080p, we ran a solid 240. Sometimes it jumped up even to like 280, 300 in some spots on the map. So it was super solid. 
no glitches, no hiccups. The drops everybody talks about are the same drops you get on an NVIDIA graphics card. I got a 4090 over here. It's the same thing. It's really not any different. So is the RX 6650 XT the best graphics card under $250 here in 2024? I don't know. You tell me down in the comments. I think the numbers are pretty awesome. 